Hi, I'm Steve Weierman, and today's tutorial is going to be a little bit different. Today I'm going to talk about how to learn a programming language, and this is any programming language. So the first thing you want to do is pick the language. So you got to decide what you want to do, why you want to learn this language. Uh, do you have a specific project in mind? Are you looking to develop a desktop application or a web application or a mobile application? And those uh, choices that you make as far as what you're trying to do uh, will determine what language you want to learn. If you want to develop an application for Android, you're going to need to learn Java. If you want to develop an application for a desktop, uh, you will probably, depending on what environment, uh, you're going to want to learn C++ or C Sharp or Cocoa or any of those applications any of those languages, or maybe even Java if you want it to be cross-platform. Uh, so what language will aid you in achieving your goals? That's, uh, that's how you really want to start thinking about this. And you can search on the internet to figure out what those are. Another thing you might want to take into consideration is where are the jobs? Uh, nowadays, functional programming languages such as Ruby, uh, or Scala are very popular and very good languages to learn, uh, so you may want to look into those. Uh, Web-based applications like uh, that use JavaScript or PHP are also uh, always in high demand, uh, but there's always a uh, overflow of people who are willing to do those sorts of jobs, so they tend not to be as lucrative as some other uh, fields. So once you decide on the languages, you want to look for the resources and tutorials. Uh, are there online tutorials and environments? Uh, most of the languages nowadays have things like that. Uh, you'll probably want to look for YouTube tutorials, like the Java tutorials that I've recorded in the past. Uh, if you really want to go the extra mile with this, uh, look on Udemy for classes or Skillshare classes. There's also typically user groups. Uh, you can look on meetup.com and see who else in your area is working with these languages. User groups are a great way also to network and find jobs. Um, after that, you're going to want to download the environment. So you got to find an environment that suits your needs. Uh, if you're learning Java, you'll probably want to do Eclipse or NetBeans or IntelliJ IDEA or JCreator if you're using Windows. Uh, if you're doing Java for Android devices, you're definitely going to need Eclipse. Uh, if you're doing JavaScript, uh, you may want Dreamweaver, although it's really, really expensive. And I would recommend actually Aptana Studio 3. Uh, which is free uh, download. It's a plugin for Eclipse, or you can download the special uh, Eclipse single package and play around with that. It's a great way to work with JavaScript and HTML5 and CSS3. Uh, C++, uh, you may want some of the uh, free IDEs such as Codeblocks or Bloodshed Dev C++ or NetBeans. Uh, if you want to learn Visual Basic or C Sharp or any of the .NET languages. Uh, you could get Visual Studio. Visual Studio is rather expensive. Uh, if you're focusing on the language, you'll probably want Mono Develop. Uh, it's a free version. It has free downloads. But for the Visual Studio uh, languages, for the .NET languages, what you're going to want to keep in mind is that the environment you'll be working in, if you get an actual job doing this, will be the Visual Studio. And you might not want to spend all the money getting the Visual Studio. What you can do is download the Visual Studio Preview, which is available for free from Microsoft. This allows you to get Visual Studio without having to actually pay for anything. It's a limited license. You can really only use it to explore, to create. You can't use it to create things for distribution, and the uh, license eventually will expire. So it will only work for so long, and then it no longer works. But you can find these things by just searching on Google for Visual 
Studio. Um, Express preview. And you're going to have to have a Microsoft account to do this. Uh, it's very easy to create a Microsoft Live account but it is a free preview. It gives you an opportunity to try the tools. Certainly look into doing that. Um, but while I'm here, before I go back to the slides, let me show you some of your options as far as before you even bother downloading an IDE. Uh, let's say you decided you wanted to learn Ruby. Uh, well, one thing you can do is go to the Ruby website so Ruby, again, is a very popular modern language. It's used heavily in web development. Uh, and you'll see here that we can download Ruby. But there's also this option here to try Ruby. So let's click on that. And a lot of the modern functional languages uh, will have things like this. And it'll walk you through a tutorial. Just type in help. And you'll see. This is very helpful in giving you some things that you can try out. It usually starts very simple and works its way up. Um, so I'm going to close that out. Uh, but that's a good way to at least get a feel for the syntax of the languages. Um, another thing you want to look out for is tutorials. If you want to learn HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript, uh, you're definitely going to want to check out w3schools.com. Uh, if you want to play around with JavaScript and HTML, uh, jsfiddle.net lets you type in code without downloading anything, uh, and you can execute it and see how it displays. Uh, another thing that lets you write code without downloading anything is ide1.com. So take a look at those things. They're very helpful things, and uh, see where it takes you. Um, once you've done all that, you've played around online, you've found a language, you uh, played around with it a little bit, you're going to want to get some uh, heavier resources for uh, for actually learning the language. So you want to find online tutorials and you're going to want to print them. Otherwise you're going to be tabbing back and forth between Window and IDE and it's just really awkward uh, to learn to program that way. If you're fortunate enough to have uh, two screens uh, or two comp laptop computers or whatever, then you could have one screen with the tutorial and the other screen or the other computer with your IDE and that works too. Uh, if you don't have that luxury, just print it out. Uh, yes, it's going to use paper, uh, but it's much easier and much faster in the long run. Buy offline things like books and read them. Uh, you're going to want to do a lot of stuff offline as much as online. Uh, so the best way to learn a language uh, or find the best book for learning a language is to just search for the language in Amazon. So I'll just search for Java and you'll look that you'll see that there's a lot of recommendations. You'll see sometimes there's free stuff. Uh, the free stuff tends not to be terribly useful. Uh, it's mostly very technical short things that don't provide too much information for learning. Uh, but you'll see that there will also be things like Java a beginner's guide, uh, that might be very useful. Uh, you're going to want to find what works best for you. And you're also going to want to find what has worked best for other people. Uh, so, for instance, uh, Amazon's very good at sorting through these things. Uh, if you're someone who's uh, just new to programming in general, 
the Head First series is good. If you're not new to programming, but you want, you're new to the specific language, uh, look at what the uh, reviews are. You want to find something with four and a half stars or five stars, and with a lot of reviews. So these two, Effective Java and uh, Java Beginner's Guide, would probably be a safe bet. You also want to make sure that what's being covered is uh, relevant to the most recent edition. So if it's Java, for instance, you're going to want to look for texts that talk about Java 7. So once you have your books, read them, read them, read them. Take notes. Uh, treat it as though you're learning any other thing, as though you're in a class. Uh, make note of the things to try out. Then do the exercises on the computer. The books usually have some good suggestions as far as uh, how to go about doing those exercises. Next, practice. Expect some frustration when you're doing this. Things aren't going to work out, always work out the way you expect them. Especially when starting out, you're going to get compile errors. You're going to get runtime errors. When these things happen, you're probably going to get tired of staring at the screen and staring at the IDE for so long. What you want to do is you want to debug offline. So you'll want to print out your programs, especially if your programs are examples that you've typed from a book. Print them out and try to find the error in the printout and get yourself away from the computer. It's really important that you take breaks from being in front of the computer when you're learning these things. Finally, once you've got a good feel for the syntax and you feel like you can work on some uh, more uh, heavy-duty projects, you're going to want to look at some open source projects to get an understanding of how other people use the language. Uh, so try to create uh, your own non-trivial project, see what you can do with it. Uh, I'm going to be doing another video tutorial on how to create a non-trivial project um, and I'll be walking you through uh, my own project folder flattener uh, which is available for free download. Uh, I will post the link in the uh, notes for this video. And then finally, be sure you have fun because if you're not enjoying what you're doing then you're really in the wrong field. Um, especially if learning is painful. Uh, if you really, really enjoy learning this stuff, then you're probably cut out for it and you're probably going to enjoy working in the field. Uh, there will be days when you're working in the field that it won't be enjoyable. There will be days when you just don't understand what's going on and there's problems with your program and you'll feel like tearing your hair out. That's inevitable. But overall, uh, you should be deriving some satisfaction from the sort of work you're doing. So keep that in mind and go out, explore, have fun. I will see you on the next video.